God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen, my friends. Your announcements for you, as you can see on the screen behind me, or of course, follow along in the, your programs as well. Of course, if you're a guest today, we'd love for you to fill out one of our guest cards. On the opposite side of that guest, guest card, for me, is our prayer card. Prayer requests, either if they're private, if they're my eyes only, or if they're public, we pray for each other, as you can see inside of our programs. If um, your guest day, we'd love for you to fill out one of those cards because not only can we let you know what we're doing at Mercy United Methodist Church, but also why we do what we do. Downstairs, today is the last day for our shoe collection um, in that tomorrow, or I should say Wednesday, they will be delivered to Grove City College for during annual conference. So, if you have any last minute shoes to drop off, you have moments, hours to go before they are taken to Grove City College. They're turned into the Erie Alliance where <clears throat> good shoes will be used in the local area, including <coughs> in the, some of those shoes may make their way back to Mercer, uh, Pennsylvania here. But others will be shipped overseas. They're able to sell some of those um, beat up older shoes for funding for mission work. So if you're interested, drop those shoes, shoes off as soon as possible. But as soon as Wednesday comes, any other shoes that are turned in, they've normally ended up going down to um, twice blessed here. If you're interested in leading a growth group, our small group ministry, please see me. We can always use more folks who are willing to lead a group and see what God can do in your walk with Jesus Christ when you're willing to take a step in leadership. If you're interested in being a member of RCI Methodist Church, membership has some privileges. I shouldn't say it like as though you get tons of privileges. There's no free coffee mug. Well, there probably is. But it's not as though the promises we'll give you from uh, American Express or whatnot. Instead, membership means you have a voice and a vote here. Everyone has a voice. Some of us have louder voices than others, but we all have a voice. It's a different thing to be have, to have a vote. So if you're interested, please see me. Um, we'll be meeting together for new members to talk about what it means to be a member here later on this summer. Meanwhile, this summer we'll also be um, investigating those questions we've been afraid to ask for our summer sermon series. I've had folks ask questions, for example, about the pre-existence of God. Where was God before the earth was created? What was he doing? Playing blotchy? That was my addition, not the questions. Or, what are all the symbols around the wooden doors downstairs into the church? What do those symbols mean? We'll look at some of those questions this summer. So if you have a question you've been afraid to ask or just never thought to ask, drop me a note, send me a Facebook message, send a carrier pigeon, whatever works. And, um, to ask your question. And honestly, or if you name yourself as well, wonderful. A couple people to say thank you to. To uh, Terry Hinkson and John Bryant, who yesterday gave up their Saturday morning and early afternoon to perform the parsonage inspection. We do the parsonage inspection hopefully every year because, as you know, with your own homes, it is easy to lose track of things you need to work on. You know, the Knicks, the things that start to fall apart and whatnot. John and Terry gave up valuable Saturday time to walk throughout the house. Um, we found some things that need some work. Um, I, you could ask John himself whether or not he thought the house was in good condition. I won't speak for him. It's great, but we'll move on. And also, John was very appreciative when I helped him get a bath later on that day, but ask John that question <laughs> when I dropped the hose. We'll move on. Yeah, suddenly I get black marks all over the place for that inspection. <laughs> But thanks to them, as well as Rodney and Michelle Gehring were here yesterday fixing things like um, um, soffit on the exterior of the church and whatnot. Great thanks to them. And also this morning we want to say, well done. Because we have three students specifically who are committed to being in worship here at Mercy United Methodist Church. Let me do this. One, because it would be for, um, say, congratulations to Cassidy Spirit. Boy, you are quick. Impressive, Megan. Cassidy Peters, um, who will be going to Clarion University in the fall for nursing. Megan Reed, who will be going to Edinburgh University for special education. And Ian Titus, who is right now toiling away in the sound booth, as he will be going to Penn Station Nango for um, business administration. So if the three of them would like to come forward, that would be a wonderful thing. I guess you have to stand up here, they can see you. 
I see enough of, I mean, I shouldn't say it that way, should I? No, I shouldn't say I see enough of you as it is. Cassidy, this is for you. I've done homework. You will be able to use that, trust me, when you get to the school. If you want to check it out now, go ahead. Megan, careful, it's mildly heavy. And Ian. When Cassidy joined the church two years ago, we made sure we gave her a Bible at that point. Well, it'd be a little goofy to give you another Bible. We give out student Bibles as well as some gifts that you'll realize that um, inside there that are appropriate, at least if nothing else, for students driving to and from school. As for you, Cassie, that will help with nursing. Are you ready to check it out? Yeah, but you haven't seen the color. I'll just tell you this, Tina chose it, so if you like the color, wonderful. If not, hot pink is just not your color, I guess. I'm joking, it's not that bad. Friends, why don't we congratulate Cassidy, Megan, and Tina. Three decorated students at Mercer High School. And now I'm being all clicky, pardon me. We didn't have that in the first service at all. And Cassidy also was willing and brave enough to share part of her story for Back Glory at Wednesday night, for which I've said before and I'll say again, we're incredibly proud. But of all three of them, we're proud. Well done. So during our hand of fellowship, friends, if you want to congratulate them, wonderful job. If you want to ask John Blaine how you can be hosed off by me as well, ask John. Let's greet one another with the love of Christ. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. The Lord is everlasting love. It is to those who fear the Lord. The Lord has established a throne in heaven, ruling over all of creation. Well done. Moving on. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in creation. Praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. So let's do that together as we sing, my friends, hymn number 452. separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No. no. In all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. My friends, please be seated. We purchased the, uh, the Media Shout program so we don't have to type everything in. Did you see how many spelling errors were on the screen right there? Oh my goodness. We'll just move on. Nothing can separate us. Uh, yes. Painful. We'll move on. You're giggling now, Patty. Okay. Do we have an anthem at this point? No. Then, friends, let's prepare ourselves for the children's message. For our youngest folks who like to come forward, that would be a great thing. Evan, good morning. By the way, great job this morning as an actor. Really, well done. That's not easy to do, especially when you're playing with live fire. 
Evan, I don't know if anybody's in the back there if they're coming. It might just be you and me. Evan. I rang the doorbell. They might be very busy. But we can just, you know, talk manly stories. I was like going Shrek. Tell manly stories and then in the morning we can eat waffles. <laughs> you don't look excited at all by eating waffles. Here I am just trying to uh, delay. There we go. Ladies, David, come on up. Right, I'll walk this way. All right, Adeline, you and I, shh, we have to be quiet because you've already heard this once, right? Okay. Have you guys ever tried to figure out how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? Never? What do you think, Riley? Well, I think that's how they make them, yeah. But the commercial used to be there would be this owl on TV. And this, I think it was a turtle came up to the owl on this old commercial, which was old when I was a kid. And yet they still put it on TV sometimes. And this owl walked up to, I mean, sorry, the turtle walked up to the owl and said, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? You know how many licks it takes? Grown-ups, how many licks does it take? Two. Three. The commercial would go, the owl would be there and he'd go, a one, a lick, a two, lick, a three, crunch. And then he'd break into the Tootsie Roll Pop and he said, three. <laughs> yes, I've watched way too much shut on TV as a child. That's about how it went. Three licks. But I had one of my youth group kids when I was a youth pastor almost 20 years ago, Quincy, who's going to soon be a pastor himself. He one day went home and he licked the Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop to see how many times it would take the lick to get to the center. He had 400 some licks. 400. You guys willing to try that when you get home? Yes. No? Yes? You don't have to, but I'd love to hear how many licks it would take you to get to the center of Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop. I'll bet for some of you, three or four or six. But don't chew them, they're not good for your teeth. That being said, sooner or later, if you keep on licking this, or if you drop into a glass of water, sooner or later everything will fade away, because it doesn't last. But the Bible tells us that God's always being willing to be with us. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, Joshua hears these words. Actually, it's up on the screen for us right now. Be strong and courageous. Don't be frightened. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's what Joshua 1, 9. Or Jesus told his disciples this. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and guess what? I'm with you always to the end of the age. In other words, what Jesus said, I'll be with you always. Well, Tootsie Roll Pops, you can lick them for 400 some licks, but sooner or later it's going to get old or sticky, or ants are going to find it, or you're going to get to the sound of the Tootsie Roll Pop and be able to eat it. It's not going to last forever. But God does not disappear. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that you don't disappear. I leave us alone. That you love us so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you guys are never alone. With that being said, I've got a Tootsie Roll Pops here. If you'd like to grab a couple, which means two-ish, go right ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Not for you, Evan. Friends, we want to give God thanks for this morning. What would you like to praise God for who God is? Is there anything we need to be praying for? Annual conference. I don't know who said that, but you're right. <laughs> Russ Campbell and I will be going to an annual conference here beginning on Wednesday. Russ will represent the church, and I as your pastor am blessed to be able to go. Um, that being said, what annual conference is, is where um, Western Pennsylvanian Methodist lay people, which means non-pastors as well as pastors, get together to vote upon leadership, finances for our area, direction of ministry, and whatnot. Um, we'll be meeting beginning Wednesday. So, that's one reason why I'll be taking those shoes with me Wednesday. Um, so, to be praying for us, there's a lot on our dockets, much more than some of what the headlines get. Bob, I saw your hand too. Um, thank God for 
given Brandy the brain, sang the physical, she got President's Award for I honors at her Franklin School, eighth grade. And then she does well in sports, so thank you. Yeah. So praise be to God for the gifts of Brandy has. Yes. High awards and a girl can, well, she's a mean softball player. Well, I shouldn't say mean. You get the idea that yeah. Brandy was mean. But you haven't seen her fast pitch, so maybe she is. Either way. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Carrie. My father-in-law is starting his chemotherapy tomorrow. Um, Brandy is the one that I would like to see more of. Remind me of Dawn's dad's name. Ronnie. Thank you. So be praying for Ronnie King, who begins chemo mm -hmm. tomorrow. Thanks, Carrie. Linda. I'd love to be more nauseous in my sight. Which is making me feel like I'm sleepy all the time. It's like my body thinks that it's time to go to bed or something like that. Right. So, anyhow, pray that I stay awake during the service today. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, you've got an excuse. Uh, there are a lot of folks who have no excuse like that. Yeah, we all have that problem. <laughs> Peggy, we've talked about the elbow for Bob. Now's the appropriate time to move on. No. Friends, in, in, in case you're wondering why that is a legitimate thing for people who start with their eyesight. Yeah, the, the, the sleeping can, for whatever reason, our bodies are wired to fall asleep at night and when you're constantly, literally, seemingly in the dark, then sleep comes much too quickly. So all kidding aside, this truly is a um, something to be praying about for Linda. Was that okay, Linda, how I said that? That was great. Really? You know, I put you to sleep there? Wonderful. Okay. All right. Friends, is there anything else we need to be praying for? You want to thank God for or praise God for who God is? Jessica. Just for our children to have a happy, healthy, adventurous summer. And just thankful for all their teachers and staff at school, their bus drivers that um, protected them and guided them this year. Agreed. Yeah, for the kids to have a safe and joyous summer. Yeah. Well, and be thankful for all the teachers and why not to be protected and let alone help them learn. Thanks, Jessica. Sailor. I'm going to be traveling to New York for the first time next week to school and I just want to thank God for all the stuff. Don't say that right beside your mom. <laughs> Advice that I can give you for being in New York more than once, don't buy anything from somebody on the streets. Those watches will not hold up. I know Jennifer's blew up on her wrist, it was hilarious. Two, stick with the group. And three, if you see the rats, just smile and keep moving. And some of them are not human. We thought we saw one that was the size of a Cocker Spaniel, so we'll move on. Yeah, so we'll be praying for Zalia as well for her trip with the school too. Friends, is there anything else we give God thanks for? Praise God for who God is. Anything we ought to be praying for? Diana. Yes, my granddaughter graduated on Friday. She's on her way to Rosedale Technical School for, uh, yeah, collision repair. Collision repair? Yes, I just hope oh, cool. she can get through it. <laughs> Diana starts going to. Granddaughter, I should say daughter, the other day. Granddaughter going to Rosedale Technical School for collision repair. And what's beautiful about that in my mind as well is then breaking the barriers that so often it was, oh, that's only a career a guy can have, which is hilarious. Some of the best mechanics I think on my car have been women. So, yeah, I'm what a neat step for her to take. Thanks, Nayana. Friends, is there anything else you want to thank God for? Praise God for who God is. Ben, let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Father, that you love us that much that you don't turn your back on us. That you would say that Joe, Joshua, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
Father, you love us so much that you don't turn your back on us. You're not a fair weather friend. You don't take vacation days on us. That you are the God who has invested in us so much. That only did your son Jesus die on the cross for us. And he paid the price for our sin and opened up hope for eternal life. But you've also sent the Holy Spirit into our lives. Or this deposit that's been placed upon us. The Spirit of Jesus, our advocate, counselor, is within us at all times. The Spirit of truth. That for those of us who know Jesus Christ, we are never alone. And although we joke about Zealie going to New York City, even there, if she's not with the rest of her group, she is never alone. We get into our heads, Father, that somehow that you, you, you really aren't real because we can't see you. Forgive us, Father. This whole thing with us following you by faith and trusting in you through faith, we're still learning. Thank you that we can cling to you. You're the one who doesn't ignore our phone calls. You're the one who is always present and not taking a nap. You are the one who has sent the Spirit. You are the one who allowed us send Jesus to pay the price for us. And not only did, has death been conquered and sin been destroyed, but not only that, we have this incredible assurance of eternal life through and only through Jesus Christ. We praise you that from everlasting to everlasting, you are God that you've created all things and you choose to be with us. I don't know how you do it, Father. I can't be in two places at once and sometimes with how my mind is scattered, I can't even be in one place at once and you're the God who can be in all places at all times. You deserve our praise. And so we're asking for your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, that the Spirit of comfort and peace might be with those that we lifted up this morning. We're praying for healing for Ronnie. It's in Jesus' name we live before you, Ronnie King, asking for you to bring about healing upon God's death. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we ask that you be with Zelia this for a trip to New York City. We're asking, Father, for you to protect her and be with the family as they stay here. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we ask you to be with Linda Cook in the midst of how the blindness has taken this turn where it's more and more difficult to be awake. We're praying, Father, for your healing touch to be upon her. Still, Father, we're waiting for you to bring about sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we look before you. Those of us who will be in your conference and decisions to be made, we're praying, Father, for your guidance, your guidance and direction. It's in Jesus' name we pray. school year with such incredible students that we have here at Mercy United Methodist Church like Cassidy and Megan and Ian. We're asking God that you would be with them and protect them as you guide them this summer as well as all of our students who have summer vacation. We thank you for the protection and, and the learning that our teachers have been able to impart the guidance and at times the difficult painful decisions administrators have had to make. For those who brought about safety for our students, like bus drivers, like the police officers who are near the school, like those who work in the cafeteria, like those who work in maintenance, Father, and so many others, we give you thanks. We're asking, Father, that you protect our students this summer. We thank you for our graduates. We thank you for Diana's granddaughter as well, off to Rosedale Technical School. We pray, Father, that you prepare the way for her. But then through Jesus Christ, we are never alone. Through Jesus Christ, you will be with us always to the end of the age. You will be with us wherever we go. So we want to thank you and praise you, Father, as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Friends, the scripture reading this morning comes from both Joshua chapter 1 as well as Matthew chapter 28. As far as I can piece together, I sent the scripture readings for this morning to the wrong people. So Bonnie is, I don't want to say winging this, but she's had all of, what would you say, Bonnie? 20 some minutes to prepare? So, Bonnie, thank you. Good morning. Good morning.
as Pastor Brian said, scripture this morning is from Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9, and Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. Joshua 1, 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert, excuse me, desert, whatever. <laughs> Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river of the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to the ancestors to give them. Be strong and be courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Now Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, stand together if you're able to so choose. <laughs> Promised land three times, 
the Lord tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. Now he says it, be strong and courageous. Then be strong and very courageous. Then be, and then be strong and courageous. Listen to my law. Follow me. I'll lead you. Those are the three promises that are connected with be strong and courageous. Listen to me. Follow me. And I'll lead. And at the end there, as Moses, or I'm sorry, as Joshua is about to speak to the Israelites, and specifically to their leaders at this point, and I will be with you everywhere you go. Those have got to be some powerful words for a man who's suddenly taking over leadership. When Moses, who the, the scriptures seem to indicate they had this father-son-like relationship between Joshua and Moses, is taking over for that father figure. Jesus, just before he enters heaven, as best as we can tell in Matthew's Gospel, as he was telling his disciples, as we've talked about the last few weeks, about their calling on their lives, Jesus finally says, go and make disciples of all nations. I heard about this this week. Just so you know, I heard about this this week from what I did last week. If you weren't here last week, this is the words I said, because often what we talk about when we talk about as Christians is we say, go and make disciples, and you know what we do? Ugh. You remember this? When I almost fell asleep up here? Yep. Yeah, they, I don't have any excuse at all. I don't. Yet that's the thing. We hear as Christians, go make disciples. You know what we do? That's great. You go do it. Or preacher, you go do it. And Jesus is looking at, as best as we can tell, 72 followers, 120 followers. I'm guessing 120 disciples and others who follow Jesus. Go and make disciples. Not just the professionals. By the way, the professionals were a bunch of fishermen, tax collectors, and cowards. Now, huh. I guess Jesus is still used to working with folks who maybe don't measure up. Because often it seems like the folks who are most effective for Jesus' use don't go to seminary. It's those of us who are willing to have a voice. Go and make disciples. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And that was Jesus saying, and I will be with you always to the end of the age. Not preacher. Jesus said, I will be with you always. And then soon he leaves them, which has got to be frustrating because it's now by the Holy Spirit. So we talked about during the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit came as though they were tongues of fire, which didn't burn anyone, but they touched the disciples and those in the upper room in their hearts. They spilled out of that upper room and were sharing the gospel in languages they'd never learned before. Where God who was able to move and work through them as God touched them. It's not about the professionals. It's about instead being willing to be used by God. But you're going to expect me to always be there for you. I'll fail you. So I'm going to say this publicly. But I said in the first service as well. Zayla, you just turned 16, right? Yeah. Guess who's the bonehead who forgot to send her a birthday card? Do you need me to point fingers? I got ten, I don't know, thumbs, fingers, or are they separate? I don't know. Anyway, I've got eight or ten, no matter how you do that. It's Haley's birthday, 16th, and I thought for sure when I was doing birthday cards, I, I, I know just the right card, I had just seen it. Between us, what the card would be, you know it and I know it, and I can tell anybody else that they feel this is a little weird, but anyhow, we'll move on. I'd seen the exact card I wanted to get to, and I thought that would be awesome. I've got cards in my office, and I'm, on Mondays, I often send out birthday cards. But this one I thought for sure, I saw that card, just don't know where I saw it. So I'm going to go get together that card. Well, I looked for that card. And honestly, I looked for it in a couple stores and couldn't find that perfect card for Zaley. And then being the intelligent, wise, and dedicated person I can be at times, guess who forgot? 16th birthday, I don't send Zaley a card. Now, Evan got his birthday card. Wasn't that grand? Zaley didn't get hers. And then every time I remember, I think, I need to go get that card for Zaley. Did you get the card yet? All right, because it's coming. <laughs> Trust me, it's in the mail. <laughs> Rats. Well, it looks like our local postal department didn't get it there yet, because I put it in the mail Thursday evening, which means who knows when it will show up. Or, of course, don't trust me anymore. One of the two. Either way, so publicly, you know I dropped the ball. One, Zaley, I apologize, because you deserve better. No, it's not. Two, if you're going to pin your hopes on me, I can't remember somebody's birthday. 
and God knows the number of hairs in your head. So friends, be careful. Don't put your trust in preachers. The dudes on TV, they can do a lot better sermon than I can, but they're not going to show up at your hospital bed. And between us, Pastor Carlson or I, we may make it there in time, and sometimes we just drop the ball because we can't do everything or we lose track of somebody's birthday. And Jesus says, I'll be with you always. Don't put your hope in other folks. But there's only one who's conquered death, and there's only one who can send the Holy Spirit. Yesterday I went to my nephew Mason's baseball game. I should call it baseball. It's T-ball. And T-ball is really not baseball. It's sort of like a mixture of wiffle ball and rugby. Because somebody hit the ball near Mason at one point in that game, and he's the youngest kid on his team, just under five years of age. Like his birthday's in July here, and then he'll be five. Somebody hit the ball to him and Mason ran to pick up the ball, and then these kids, one of whom looked to be twice his age, ran at Mason and almost tackled him to get the, the baseball. He would have been crushed. Thankfully, it was pretty awesome to watch my nephew just grab that ball, whiz it just past that kid's head, over him, and towards the first base. And he almost made it there from shortstop. We'll move on. I'll stop gushing as an uncle. My favorite part of the day, though, was this. As we show up at the game, there's Mason. When he sees he and I walk up, all of a sudden, he went from talking with a couple of his friends to... <laughs> You know how four-plus-year-olds are at times, and this kid is just gushing. Now, I, this gets me a little emotional here, because as one day when Tina was down in Pittsburgh to see, uh, babysit Mason and his little sister Mia, Mason was mildly cranky with Tina, probably because she told him he couldn't do something he thought he should be able to do, like drive a car or something like that. And so Mason looked at Tina and said, Aunt Tina, I don't like you, but I love Brian. Uh, wow! Take it when you can get it. Bah, bingo! Because it disappears quickly. And right now, in this kid's head, I am somehow, you know, the primo of the other primo, except for his older brother, Brayden. Another story for another day. Anyhow, we show up, and all of a sudden, that arm is waving. The kid's almost jumping up and down. He can't even sit on second base or shortstop, wherever he is. He keeps on wanting to wave when we, he sees us. That's like God when we give God attention, when we actually turn our minds to who God is. Do not dismiss, just because he's four years of age, the incredible joy that Mason had. You've seen it from kids or your grandkids whenever they've been overjoyed to see you. That seems to be more the sense of God and God's feelings towards us when we have a mind towards God. If nothing else, why would Jesus then say, if you enter the kingdom of heaven, you must become like a little child? There's something about this joy that God has when we turn our attention to God. You and I, we've grown up with the maniacal checklist, rules and regulations, God. And that's a part of what we hear in Joshua. I don't want to dismiss that. But if Jesus came, and it's by grace we've been saved, through faith. In other words, it's not what we've done, but it's what God has done for us. There's something joyous when we turn our attention to God dismiss that. I'm going to bet when the one who is always with us sees the fact that we are, that we've turned our attention back to God, instead of, it's the, about time. My assumption is it's much closer to you made it. See, humans are going to drop the ball. God's got that attention to be overjoyed when we show up. In, Josh, in Joshua, we need to hear that there are three conditions as the Lord tells Joshua, do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. One, because we're called to go where God would have us go. God's got something for each of us to do, to listen to God. When we're willing to, I'll be with you wherever you go. God also desires for us to follow God's commands best as we can. That is one of those things that's mentioned in Joshua. Do the best you can, and I'll be with you wherever you go. Follow me, and I'll be with you wherever you go. There are going to be those moments that we're going to, we're going to be faltering. We're going to feel like we cannot finish the race. The story goes that, I can't remember the young man's name off the top of my head, Derek Brevin was his name. He was running in the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. 
from, from Britain. And he had gold medal aspirations. A lot of Olympians are just happy to make them. They're hoping they get a medal, period. Derek Redman had gold medal aspirations in the 92 Barcelona Mono Olympics. But maybe you've seen this before. As he was run, running in the semifinals, pulling away, suddenly he felt that twinge in the back of his leg. He had torn his hamstring. It's one thing when you tweak your hamstring running. You're done. It's a whole other thing when he tears his hamstring. He could not run. If anything, he couldn't even walk. He crumpled to the ground. His hopes in four years of training, done with a hamstring that hadn't been stretched long enough, or just that day it was going to give out. As he's lying on the track, crying in Barcelona, security tried to stop a man who was running through the stands, wearing you know, this a British t-shirt coming down the steps. At one point, someone allowed him to go through because it was Jim Redmond, Derek's dad. The story goes that Jim got to his son who was laying in the, the track dust, Defeated tears all over his face. And Jim, the father, said, You don't have to finish this. Derek's response is, I have to. And we'll do it together. Jim picked up his son. And as his boy, who only had one leg that really worked, they slowly hobbled to the finish line. They were last place. And yet the place erupted. Because he was never alone. Dad was there. Friends, for many of us, we don't have our earthly fathers here with us, but our heavenly father is the one who never disappears. God has more invested in us than we can ever give back to God. God's one only son, as we talked about last week, not only is Jesus God's son, but Jesus is somehow still God. Died for you and for me. God has more invested in us than we can ever get back to God. That's God's love for us. God has so much invested in us, he's not turning his blind eye to us. Or if you read through that, that account with Elijah and the Bill prophets in the Old Testament, God's not vacationing or traveling as um, Elijah suggested to those Bill prophets. Or maybe he's taking a nap. No, God doesn't. If it feels like God's distant at times because we're doing things we shouldn't be doing, or we're not paying attention to what God would have us do. But even then, that's more of how we feel. Because Jesus promised his disciples, and by proxy, by the Holy Spirit, and by a sacrifice, promised us as well, I'm with you always to the end of the age. We're never alone. So here's your assignment this week. We've given you a couple doozies over the last weeks. Here's your assignment. Thank God this week daily in the middle of the day. Especially, thank God for God's presence. So, middle of the day, when it comes to your mind, thank God. Now, between us, that might be 14 times in a day. Wonderful. It might just be once in one day. Don't kick yourself over it. And don't be going, ooh, look at me. 14 times. I must be spiritual. No, that's not the point. This is about... Thanking Jesus for his spirit being in our presence. It's about thanking God the Father that we're never alone. <coughs> so that's your assignment for this week. I'd love to hear the surprising times when God jumped out at you. Because, friends, we're never alone. God is more invested in us through Jesus Christ than we can ever get back to God. Thanks be to God. We're never alone. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous because as God spoke to Job, Joshua, and we can apply it to ourselves as well, but we're willing to follow Jesus. I'll be with you wherever you go. Because we're in the business self doing the best we can to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that Jesus commanded. Then guess what? Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, will be with, all, be with us always to the end of the age. Never alone. Would you pray with me? I encourage you to close your eyes and turn your hands up toward heaven as we talk with God. If you want to read the prayer, it's on the screen behind me, but it's better just to pray. So friends, let us pray. Lord God, loving Father. Lord God, loving Father. I love you. I love you. I trust you. I trust you. Be with me. 
I love you. I love you. I will serve you. I will serve you. Be with me. Be with me. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, let's sing together as we worship together. Our hymn of preparation for the Lord's Supper. Hymn number 99. <laughs> Friends, hear the good news. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. That proves to us God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And all together we say, Glory to God. Amen. Friends, here at Mercy United Methodist Church and within the United Methodist Church, we have an open table, which means you don't have to be a member. You can still be trying to understand who Jesus is in your life. It's an open table. It's a reminder of God's grace for us. It's because it's not about what we've done, but what Jesus has done. Or, as we often say here, we're saved by grace. Being saved, it's a gift. Yeah. It's not a yeah. If you're new to this place, we make it really difficult, and it shouldn't be, because I'm being sarcastic, because God's grace is that powerful. There's a high price to follow Jesus. We get in the door, all about what Jesus has done. Because the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the brothers before him and he broke it, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He's pointing to his body, broken for us on the cross. And he said, this is my blood of the new covenant. The new covenant based on the fact that God's done the work for us through Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the Lord's Supper today to celebrate the fact that through Jesus Christ, we're never alone. And so, friends, it's an open table, um, and you also find with the bread gluten free wafers because we want everyone to be able to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Let's celebrate the Lord's Supper together.
So my friends, as the communion cups are collected, let us pray together. Friends, let's pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In other words, go and make disciples. <coughs> Friends, let's continue to worship, though, as we sing together. Well, no, we're not singing yet. <laughs> Which is how it sells sometimes it seems to come across, huh, Marianne? And really, it's about worshiping God for how we give. So let's, let's continue to worship, my friends, for the collection of our tithes and our offerings.
so many ways. And what we have here is a, a hint of the blessings. Yeah, we give it back to you. Thank you, you, for how you provide for us and how you're always with us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so, my friends, let's sing together as we worship. There's within my heart a melody. And number three.